Hi, I'm the Rap Critic, and this was a request by Josh Bendan. And if you'd like to join my Discord, see episodes early, or make requests for reviews, check out my Patreon, where you can help keep the show going, plus see what I'm up to in between episodes. Also, as a bonus for Stationhead listeners, I'll be streaming both big pun albums after this episode initially premieres on YouTube, so come through if you want to listen along with me. As well, tune in every Thursday at 7pm for New Hip Hop Thursdays, where we play some of the dopest music I just happened to hear in the last couple of weeks. Tune in and let's talk music. But for now, let's specifically talk about what makes a rapper truly great. Ever since Big Daddy Kane and Rakim started complicating their flows with internal rhymes and faster cadences, hip-hop heads have been playing a game of ranking every rapper into their own hierarchies for the greatest of all time. Certain names constantly come up and certain names fall by the wayside, but through it all, there's always been this culture-guarding exercise of contemplating who's able to craft the dopest record that the most amount of people will undeniably want to bite off of. Justifying all your brag raps about how people are trying to bite off of you. And while lyrical ability is definitely a main component, I gotta agree with some people who don't focus on complexity as much. As many times, complicated flows come off as awkwardly overwritten and hard to listen to, and sometimes only achieve the goal of sounding impressive without actually saying anything impressive. And what's more, isn't there something to be said for showmanship beyond just words? Surely, uh, guys like Outkast wouldn't be the classic artists they are now without the production or what they were talking about beyond just compound syllables. Or what about new flows, uh, playing with new time signatures, or maybe even judging an artist by how prolific they were or how they pioneered into new genres? A Greatest of All Time nomination should be able to encompass as many of these qualities as possible, uh, balancing the crowd-pleasing joints with the wordplay and the storytelling abilities. And as short as his career may have been, I gotta present you with Big Pun. Now, I briefly mentioned Big Pun in the Lean Back episode I did about 10 years ago, and holy shit, I just realized I've been doing this show for 10 years. Huh. Well, um, I sincerely want to say, I really, thank you guys for rocking with me all this time. I'm really glad you guys value my opinion and have been following me on my journey from a destitute reviewer barely making it by with internet videos to a slightly less destitute... Well, either way, it's been fun. Of course, special thanks to my patrons for keeping the show going and allowing me to expand beyond that into podcasting and station head and doing live shows. It's been a dream come true for me, honestly. And now that we're feeling uncharacteristically positive for an internet review show, let's get back to gushing about Big Pun. Because if you listen, virtually every rhyme he created managed to be these sharply tuned darts that combined fun cadences and ever-evolving multis, usually punctuated by an over-the-top line that pulls you in with its absurdity. Dude was larger than life. Yes, of course, in stature, but also when it came to his outlandish musical persona. A lot of rappers that try to position themselves as great will maybe only focus on the lyrical ability without focusing much on crafting a persona to hang your lyrics on that make you an engaging personality to listen to in the first place. But Big Pun always felt like a well-rounded artist, mastering shock raps while also writing clever hooks that ultimately never sounded like he was sacrificing his personality or lyrical ability, which kept his underground fans on board during his rocket to mainstream success. I mean, how many times have you heard an artist who sounded hungry when they started, but as soon as they hop on the big records, their wordplay suddenly becomes less impressive, or their personality gets a little drowned out by the need to be more palatable for the mainstream? Not so for The Punisher. I want to get a brunette with a forgettable sex, I lay your head on my chest, I feel my heart beat, we can park the Jeep, put my deep, and just park the leaf. Even his biggest hits have an undeniable level of skill involved with how he creates imagery and uses complex rhyme styles without ever falling into the trap of sounding overly written or like he was jamming in rhymes just to sound impressive. Take for example today's request his posthumous single It's So Hard and how it starts off making a play for the radio with its light piano sample of a track from a Latin artist named Danny Rivera. En un rincón del alma. Incidentally, upon doing research for this song, I found out about Rivera's focus on political activism and how he drew his musical influences from Puerto Rican folk music, which, as I found out, was apparently going against the grain for the standard mainstream Latin pop at the time. So, wow, okay, uh, staying true to your roots and having it lead you to success on your own terms. I, I guess that's the message for today. For real, uh, Danny Rivera was called the national voice of Puerto Rico, if that gives you any indication of his importance. And while maybe it's not the biggest deal in this instance, as it's just using the opening medley to twist it into a flossy P. Diddy type rap, it's interesting that there's still that little callback to his heritage that just sort of lives within the music itself, you know? It's a tradition that you can in fact still hear in Latinx rappers to this day. Uh, check out my I Like It review if you want to know more about that. You can catch me in the cherry red 150. Ooh. Okay, so question, when he mentions the 150 here, is, is he talking about the 
the, the truck? Because I've always just assumed that's what he meant. Unless there's some sort of luxury vehicle known as a 150. I'm way too low on the tax bracket to ever need to know about. But I tried looking it up, and the only thing I could find is the trucks by Ford. And, I mean, they're functionally competent, I guess, but nothing that would attract envy. Although, now that I think about it, I like the idea of starting off a flossy party song by name-dropping a relatively unremarkable vehicle. I guess the idea is that he's not driving the type of car you'd expect a rapper to drive. Well, that would explain the slightly impressed background vocals there. You can catch me in the cherry red 150. Ooh. Starting a rap song about a car that's affordable? Oh, where's he going with this? But as you keep listening to the verse, it starts to make sense what's happening. Ooh. Got the grizzly locked in the stizzy. Pop the glizzy doing 60 down a wall with the drunk pissy. <laughs> For instance, what he's saying here is just, I got the Glock in the stash, pop in the clutch while going 60 down a one-way drunk pissy. But he's manipulating the usage of Izzy in a way that adds some flair and accentuates a fun-flowing rhyme scheme. Because there's only two real words that rhyme in there, drunk pissy and 60. But just by being creative with that suffix, it helps create this new bouncy cadence that's way more fun to rap along to. Fuck that. It's got that chill feel of, hey, you know, I'm normally a humble guy, but you know, try to clown me and I will pull out the big wheels on you. And you, you know, now that I'm really processing it, the fact that he starts off in a normal truck that receives minor damage after he takes it out for a spin, but then comes back to his peoples in a car so sleek and badass, its nickname is the thing people exasperatedly ask as it zooms by. Hey, that's a pretty slick narrative right there. Take a glance and I'm off with yours, but both hands and off my drawers and be like the Source Awards. So, I actually looked up and found out who won the category he was nominated for in the 99 Source Awards. And still not a player by Big Pun. Lost to Juveniles. Ha. You know who got hit by the green, huh? You know how to use a triple beam, huh? It ain't hard to see, huh? And you know, I understand Juvenile has his place, but uh, just figured giving you that info would properly clue you into uh, to, uh, just how right Big Pun was about that point. I love hip hop, I ain't even probably the best there is just alive. It's honestly unbelievable to hear him say something like that. Like, how could you not think you're one of the best rappers ever after the monsoon of dope lyrics he was able to make in such a short period of time? Like, what? I have... Have you heard yourself, man? Dude was a stellar, pitch-perfect lyricist. And on top of that, you couldn't help but have a good time when listening to him, especially when he ad-libs over the hook here. Uh, like when he's turning away these bums who are pretending like they know him just to get money from him. Would you say your name was again? And I know you from where? Elementary school. It oh, it's hard. hard. It's hard work, baby. I just lost a hundred pounds. I'm trying to live. Staying alive, baby. You know, for a single release after a man's death, you'd, you'd think somebody would have had the good sense to cut out the part where he says he's going to stay alive. But hey, maybe they intentionally left in the shit talking, uh, awkward parts and all, uh, as a way to really let his funny, carefree personality shine. Letting people enjoy the irony of Don L. Jones' sweetly sung hook against Pun's unhinged non sequiturs. Not gonna lie, as a kid, it was probably mostly the crazy ad-libs that initially got me into this song. That's my wife, I pay for them titties. Get your own, your own, your heart. Niggas wanna fuck my wife. It was, it, if I'm being honest, it was, it was probably mainly that one. Overall, though, of course, I'd give it a 5 out of 5. Lots of rappers brag about versatility, but very few can actually prove it. And, and dude had such an airtight flow and engaging personality. If you haven't heard his music before, please, you're missing out. Give it a listen. And if you have, what the hell are you doing listening to this shit? Go listen to his music, goddammit! Well, that's the episode. Leave a like if you liked it, because it helps. Comment if you have something to say, because it helps even more. And hit the subscribe button and the bell, because that helps the most. And if you'd like to make a song album request, or just like the show and want to support it, we're funded by viewers like you, so hit up my Patreon. On. I just revamped it with a couple of new things like the Discord, behind the scenes, extra stuff. Check all that stuff out. And until next time, I'm the Rap Critic. You don't have to like my opinion, but I mean, if you don't agree on this one, you're just, you're just gonna have to be wrong because I do one of the greatest of all time. I don't give a damn what you say. Oh.